Have you been submitting application after application and have yet to receive an interview invite? Or are you pulling your hair out trying to figure out why, despite being totally qualified, you're being ghosted by companies when you submit your resume? Today, I'm going to give you a peek behind the hiring curtain and show you what you might be missing or what you can fix that can help you get connected with the hiring manager. Hi, my name is Ashley Davis. I work in talent development with Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. Thanks for joining me for this week's Tuesday Talks. We're going to be talking about applicant tracking systems. Have you ever heard of them? Don't feel bad if you haven't because I didn't until I started working here and reviewing resumes for clients. And man do I wish that I knew about it when I was job hunting. I'm going to be telling you what an applicant tracking system is, how it works, and how you can adjust your job strategy to account for it. Applicant tracking systems, or as you'll see them referred to, ATS, they're types of software that companies use to streamline their hiring process. They use this because one job might have 300 applicants, and that would take forever for a human to sort through. It really is a win-win in theory because it speeds up the hiring process and allows them to be more responsive to you when you apply for a job. However, as with all things automated, the ATS systems, they see the world as black and white. They look for exactly what they're told to look for and they filter out anything that doesn't meet those components. This is why you've likely applied to a position that you know you'd be the perfect person for. It perfectly aligns with your experience and your qualifications, only to later receive a rejection email that you know is a template. If you're anything like I was when I was job searching, these situations, it can lead to a massive decrease in self-confidence, and you might start thinking that you're less qualified than you thought you were. But wrong. You just didn't include what the ATS was set to look for. Maybe you thought it was implied, but either way, that box wasn't checked, and so you were filtered out. It would be nice for it to have the critical thinking skills of a human, but hey, we don't want our robots getting too smart, right? The goal of an applicant tracking system is to take the large number of submissions, filter out the ones that do not meet the job requirements, leaving only a handful of the most qualified candidates. So then instead of having to go through all of the submissions, the hiring manager only sees those top candidates. Applicant tracking systems do this by parsing through your resume in search of keywords. It then sorts the relevant information that it found into categories. Those categories generally are contact information, skills, work experience, and education. I like to think of these categories as buckets. Whatever the ATS was able to pull off of your resume gets thrown into the relevant bucket. Then, based on how full the bucket is, the system will either reject you or it will include you on the list that a human sees. The key to working with ATS is to make sure that when it parses your resume, it finds what it's looking for, and at the end, those buckets are full. This is how you get on the top candidate list that is then sent to the hiring manager. To do that, you have to know what information your resume will be scanned for, and you need to ensure that the applicant tracking system can accurately parse through that information on your resume. If it can't, there's nothing to fill the buckets with, and the system will interpret this as you are not qualified for the position. So there you have it. This is why you're not getting interviews for the jobs that you are a perfect match for. It is so important that you make sure that your application is ATS compatible so that you can start getting connected with hiring managers. So before hitting submit on your application, your mission is two things. One, 
know what your resume is going to be scanned for. And two, make sure that your resume is ATS friendly. Okay, so how are you supposed to know what it's being scanned for? Easy, they just told you. Yep, it's what's included in that job post. Mm -hmm. Read through it carefully a few times. Make note of the minimum and the preferred qualifications and the key things that stick out in the job description. Make note of anything that the post says that the employer is looking for in the ideal person for the job. These are the things that the employer told the system to look for when submissions come in. Be sure you include every keyword that applies to you on your resume. Fill those buckets up. Because this isn't being reviewed by a human directly, that archaic rule of keep your resume to one page really doesn't apply here. You want to make sure that you are including all relevant keywords. And if that pushes your resume over the one page mark, that is totally fine. Don't assume anything in regards to your qualifications or your skills is implied because it's likely not a human that's making those first round cuts. The number one thing that I hear from job seekers when they're trying to revamp their resume to make it ATS friendly is they feel weird about pulling the keywords from the job description and putting them into their resume. I don't know if it's some sense of feeling like they're plagiarizing the job description or what, but don't be afraid to use the terminology that's actually included in the job description. This is not your English essay that you had to do in high school. Be careful using synonyms, be careful describing it and beating around the bush just for the purpose of avoiding this one word. If the job description says that they want a creative individual or a team player, creativity or creative and team player are two things that you need to include on your resume. Okay, so that was part one of the mission. Let's move on to part two, which is make your resume ATS friendly. But remember, this is not a physical printout of your resume. Be careful when you're choosing your formatting because this is what can trip up the ATS system. Showing your creative side with a potential employer can win you some serious brownie points. But I'm gonna be honest, the application process is not the place to do it. This is because the standard applicant tracking system is designed to just look for text. They can't read anything other than the simple plain text that's on your page. If you have a lot of fancy formatting on your resume, then that ATS system will not be able to read the text and then it's unable to pick up any of the relevant information that you included, thus resulting in those empty buckets that I talked about earlier. There are more advanced ATS systems being released all the time that are a lot more flexible in what they're able to read and parse through, but you don't know what the company is using on their end, so it's always best to play it safe. Here is what you need to avoid on your ATS friendly resume. It should not be a PDF format. Do not submit a PDF. For safe measure, do not include color pretty much anywhere on the document. Stick to that black and white. The system cannot read any information included on graphs or formatted into a table. Yes, even if you hide those borders. Skip including your headshot, that can also mess with the scanning process. As can icons, which a lot of people tend to use in their contact information section. With that being said, some ATS systems don't read the headers included on the document. Okay, so what do you need to do to make sure that your resume is an ATS friendly resume? It should be submitted as a .doc file type, like a normal standard Microsoft Word document or Google Docs. 
it should be done in a commonly used simple font such as Arial or Calibri or Times New Roman. You should have extremely simple formatting. About as crazy as you should get is maybe including bullet points or section spacers, like thicker lines to break up those categories. But do not flex your creativity here. An ATS friendly resume includes all applicable keywords in the relevant categories. Your categories on your resume should be exactly contact information, skills, work experience, and education. Do not deviate from that just in case the system doesn't recognize the different title that you used. I know on my previous resume, before I knew about applicant tracking systems, I used professional experience. So there were likely some applications that it didn't read that category or bucket correctly, making me not qualified. Work experience should be listed as company name because the system scans for this particular thing first when it's looking at your experience. And then your job title and then the dates that you worked there. This ensures that the system calculates your applicable years of experience accurately. There's going to be situations where you will need your fancy resume and there will be situations where you need your ATS friendly resume. If you're in a creative occupation like graphic design, you likely won't be up against applicant tracking systems. And that's because your resume submissions are a chance for you to show off your skills. But if you're in an occupation that's not artistically focused, chances are very high that you will encounter ATS systems in your job hunt. Keep that fancy version of your resume around. You can use it when you're emailing it directly to someone or really any situation where you're not submitting your application through the company website. When you know for sure that your resume is going directly to a human, you can keep all of those carefully chosen design elements and know that they won't be hindering you in the application process. Just use your best judgment depending on the situation. This week, I'm issuing you all a challenge. Create an ATS friendly version of your current resume using what you learned today. Test it out on a few postings if you find a position that interests you. I can't wait for you guys to see the drastic impact that these changes will make on the responses that you're getting. I also want to recommend one site that I use every time I'm doing a resume review. Jobscan.co is a super awesome site. It has a ton of information on applicant tracking system tips and tools to help you determine if there's anything in your resume that could trip up the ATS system, along with a ton of other great information and resume tools, and it's free. I hope that today helped shed some light on what happens behind the scenes in the hiring process. But most importantly, I hope that it helped you shake off some of that self-doubt and showed you that just because you aren't getting responses to your applications does not mean that you are not qualified or you're not as skilled as you thought you were. It just means that your resume wasn't formatted in the way that it needed to be. And that is totally fixable. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you next week and best of luck to you in your job search.